Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I wanted to start this uh, video by um, telling you about this uh, kind of call to arms that Mr. B XRP has given us. Uh, and I thought that it was a smart thing to do. In fact, the smartest thing I think any of us can do in this bear market is to focus on what he's saying here. To all of our content creators, let's make a push over the next 10 days to get all U.S. citizens to contact their congressmen about the Token Taxonomy Act. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Token Taxonomy Act is going through Congress right now. And if passed, it will give digital assets a, a new class, classification and will exempt them from being called securities. This is probably the most important thing that can happen this year. And if it does happen, I believe that it will take down all kinds of barriers to this bear market. And we could come roaring out of the bear market just on the passage of this, because then everybody will have a little bit of certainty that they haven't had. Um, and so um, I wanted to show you to do my part. Um, this is the Token Taxonomy Act, and it's uh, H.R. 7356. And then you can go, and I'll put this link in the description of this video. Um, this is the, you can put in your zip code, and then it'll tell you who your representative is, and it'll show you how you can contact them. Uh, but if you don't want to look in the description of my thing, of my video, then it's uh, at house.gov slash representatives slash find dash your dash representative <clears throat> and you can find it there okay well definitely go and tell them that you want you support and want them to pass the token taxonomy act okay um, this is from cz binance for any internet non-physical based business i don't understand why anyone would not accept crypto for payments it is easier faster and cheaper to in integrate than traditional payment gateways less paperwork and reaches more diverse demographic and geography the world is your oyster <laughs> and i thought this is exactly right i mean uh, th this guy the everything about digital assets makes sense and everything about the way this cz binance is running binance makes sense i like things that make sense and that's why i'm a big fan of of binance as well um moving along this is from X-Men XRP at XRP33. He sent me this article. Now, this article is interesting. Um, analyst says Bitcoin will smash gold's 7.8 trillion market cap. And the reasoning behind this, this is from Willie Wu at Wu-Nomic. Uh, this is the reason why I think Bitcoin, and now keep in mind, he's talking about Bitcoin, but XRP has the same properties in terms of a limited supply. Um, so follow what, what he's talking about here. This is the reason why I think Bitcoin will exceed gold's market cap. Mathematical scarcity beats perceived scarcity. Uh, perceived scarcity comes only from the technological limitations of today. And, and he referenced, he's retweeting this tweet. 700, 700 quintillion asteroid uh, ignite space mining gold rush between Mars and Jupiter exploration to start in 2022. Enough gold, iron to give each person on Earth billions worth of the not so precious metal metals. What they're and so basically they're saying they think there's a possibility that gold and iron are on some of these planets that we might one day be able to visit. Now whether that's true or not, with gold still uh, in the world today, a gold mine could be discovered tomorrow anywhere. And so he's making the point that there will not be more of a digital asset like Bitcoin and it's a mathematical certainty. Whereas with gold, it's new, new reserves of gold could be discovered tomorrow. Um, same goes for XRP, but then I, he, I wanted to complete this thought he's got here. Um, 
Now, this is, an, uh, I think, another person. How does Satoshi describe Bitcoin? His forum posts provide insight through his consistent gold metal analogy. Bitcoin is more collectible or, or commodity, and that's from Satoshi. But this is the interesting thing. In this sense, it's more typical of, of a precious metal. Um, instead of the supply changing to keep the value the same, the supply is predetermined and the value changes as the number of users grows. The value per coin increases, Satoshi. Now, think about that from a, an adoption standpoint as an XRP holder and as a Bitcoin holder. From an adoption standpoint, we know that it's really, with Bitcoin, it might be less than 5% of the population even knows what it is. With XRP, it's probably less than 0.1% of the population even knows what it is yet, and much less how to invest in it. So, I want to make one more point as far as that scarcity goes. Remember this, I spoke about it yesterday. Some of you may not know about this. $500 million in Ripple lost as billionaire Matthew Mellon dies suddenly. When cryptocurrency billionaire Matthew Mellon died unexpectedly in April, access to his fortune in Ripple XRP was lost forever. The crypto billionaire held around half a billion U.S. dollars of Ripple XRP. For security reasons, only him, himself only himself had access to the funds, meaning the money may now be lost forever. He's the only one that held his keys, folks. Now, how many other people across the world are in this same situation, like the Canadian exchange where the, the, the founder died um, and there was 190 million... 190 million in digital assets, 190 million dollars worth of digital assets lost forever. How much more of that has gone on? Is the actual supply of XRP that will ever really be used or moved or anything, is the actual supply 99 billion instead of a billion because of what this guy lost? One day we might know some things like that. Who knows? Who knows where this all goes? But that the fact that, it, it, in, in other words, your, the, the supply of XRP cannot increase, but it can decrease in essence. Same for Bitcoin um, because of lost private keys. Um, okay, this is from XRP Veteran. Congrats for the people that have holds the entire bear market. Bear market record of, a, of 411 days crypto history. Um, so this is... Um, the long is to, as I think as of today, it's the longest bear market ever for Bitcoin. So I thought that was interesting. Now I have been getting a lot of requests to do what I'm about to do, which is to go through um, how, how how I buy my crypto as far as like where and, and what my thoughts are on where to buy it, where to not really keep it. I can, I've made it clear where to keep it. I'm deleting a few um, screens here. Um, the, before I go into these, I want to I want to tell you about one that I'm, I I just accidentally deleted, which is Bitstamp. Um, Bitstamp is for if I was if I lived in Europe, Bitstamp, which you can buy and sell XRP on, would be my go-to exchange. I love Bitstamp. I have an account. I used to, to actually store my XRP on Bitstamp, but Bitstamp I never had any problems with. They have you can you can withdraw as much of your digital assets. You, know, you can sell your XRP into fiat, and then you can withdraw it as in any amount you want. So for Europeans, Bitstamp I'm a big fan of. I'm not going to talk about Bitstamp because I'm in the United States. I'm not going to talk as much about um, things that aren't U.S. based. Just because that's where I am, I am going to talk about um, Binance. But first, I'm going to get the elephant in the room out of the way. Um, I think Coinbase has done almost irreparable damage, unless they listed XRP today or, or in the near future. I, I think that they have lost so many potential customers, it's not even funny. I've never seen a business... Never in my life have I seen a business operate like this and ignore customers the way they have. And it is majorly to their detriment. However, I think Coinbase still benefits right now 
with the one thing, which is, well, two things really. They're, they're, first of all, and most importantly, this is the one digital asset exchange in the United States that I have been able to move freely into and out of digital assets. And for that reason, I would still use them. And I would tell you to do the same. Um, now, there are some that are coming on strong, and I'm going to talk about those as well. But as, a, as I sit here today still, this is the only, only U.S.-based exchange where I have been able to move freely between my bank in and out of crypto. And for that reason, they are still, in my opinion, that might be the only reason they're still alive <laughs> as far as being in business. Um, so, uh, you, but here's the limitations. You can only, you can't get XRP. These guys, if they listed XRP tomorrow, I believe overnight they would be, have probably thousands and thousands more customers and fans than they do now overnight with the flick of a switch. But I don't think they're going to flick that switch anytime soon. I think these guys have a problem with XRP. I think they have a problem with Ripple and I don't understand. I don't, I, I don't understand why if you're going to get in the digital asset business that you would ever um, approach this the way they have, but they do. So I've told you, the, the other there's one one other reason that that they that this particular company in my opinion is um is something that you have to keep up be open minded to using and that is the limits um, I know for a fact that you can get limits uh, withdrawal limits see if you if you own a bunch of cryptocurrency that doesn't mean anything if you can't get it off of these exchanges in in large volumes. You think you're going to go buy a Lambo? Well, you're not buying a Lambo if you can't, if you don't have the approved limits to get Lambo kind of money out of these digital exchanges. And I'll tell you right now, that has been my focus. Um, my focus in this bear market has been two things. One, I've been accumulating like you wouldn't believe. I've been accumulating left and right in several digital assets. Two, and probably just as important, I have been setting up all of my exit strategies. With every single exchange, you have there, they have a different system for, for how you set it up so that you can get approved to move certain amounts out of these digital exchanges. And so if you're not approved, so if you're only approved to move one Bitcoin at a time out of, say, Binance, then what have you accomplished by owning a bunch of Bitcoin? I mean, it, it defeats the entire purpose. And so if you haven't done it, you need to go to every exchange, whatever your exit strategy is, you need to approve with that exchange how you're going to get out. You need to make sure you've given them whatever they need to get your limits for withdrawals and link your bank accounts. Whatever you need to do, you need to do it. Okay, I'm done talking about Coinbase, so you'll be happy. Uh, Binance. Binance is my favorite exchange, hands down. But here's the problem. Binance is located in Singapore. Now, Binance this week added the ability, you'll see it right here. Um, they added the ability to buy digital assets with credit cards. But as a U.S. citizen, I don't believe I can get, um, I do not believe that I would be able in any kind of a liquid way with large amounts of money, I don't think I would be able to dump those from Binance, dump those in U.S. dollars from Binance to my bank account right now. Now, I'm sure that Binance is going to set that up, but income, the regulatory environment, we don't know. What if, what if the Securities Exchange Commission says that Binance is, um, we're, that U.S. citizens aren't allowed to use Binance? Well, what if they came out and said that? Because, sure, they, they have all sorts of digital assets on Binance's exchange. And the SEC has made it clear that they call some digital assets or ICOs that they don't approve of. Well, does that mean that we, that they won't allow us at some point to go on to Binance at all? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And for that reason, um, 
even though Binance is the best exchange, they're located in Singapore. They're not located in the United States. And so that's something to think about. Now, I use Binance because you can't get some of the digital assets anywhere except Binance. Binance has Binance trades in a lot of digital assets that other places don't trade in. And so it's one of the only places you can go to get them. And so it's, it's going to be an option um, for, for that reason if for no other reason. But I know for a fact, Binance, when you first sign up, you, you can only, there's only, there's a, like a one, I think it may be like a one Bitcoin withdrawal in it. You have to give them certain information so that you can withdraw, get approved to withdraw it to like a hundred, the equivalent of a hundred Bitcoin at a time. Um, and that's to move it out in Bitcoin or other digital assets. So anyway, um, right now that would be a very good exit strategy uh, for someone who wants to sell out and they need to sell out X XRP and they live say in the United States or anywhere else. You could go, um, you could go and you could sell your XRP into Bitcoin on Binance. You and you could then send that Bitcoin to um, your Coinbase wallet, or you could also send it to Uphold. You could send it to Bitrix. These are both, um, these two are both U.S. based. Bitrix and Bitrix is having a hard time here. Bitrix and Uphold are U.S. based, <clears throat> and I know that both of those can be linked like Coinbase to your bank account. I don't know how, how, what the limits are yet. To my knowledge, there, you, there are higher limits on Coinbase. Coinbase has a longer track record than both of them, but these are both worth looking into. And they both, XRP can be bought and sold on both of these. So these need to be something you're open to also. Now, I want to mention Gemini, okay? Gemini. Is, does not, you cannot trade XRP on Gemini, but the same way Gemini is my understanding of Gemini. I have not bought and sold on Gemini, but I do have a Gemini account. And I, I, I believe that Gemini has a lot of liquidity like Coinbase. And that's the other issue you need to make sure you understand. Coinbase has been here a long time. They have a, they have more customers than any of these places I'm talking about, except maybe Binance. Um, but Coinbase, when, you, when it's time for you to sell, whatever you're selling into, there's going to be a lot more buyers for what you're selling on Coinbase than there's going to be on Uphold and on Bitrix. Now, Gemini might be a different story. I believe Gemini has a lot more liquidity. I want to be a Gemini fan. I really do. This is the one that's, run, that's owned by the Winklevoss brothers. In fact, I watched the Facebook movie this week just to refresh my memory more about the Winklevoss brothers. I would love to be able to sit down with the Winklevoss brothers and say, look, you guys need to add XRP. I know you're, you're huge Bitcoin holders, but in the scheme of things, in the, in the mid to long run, like I've said before, like Brad Garlinghouse has said, Bitcoin's going to win probably just like XRP is. I think XRP to a larger extent. And if I'm a betting man, the Winklevoss brothers own XRP. Now, they don't house XRP. Everybody thinks that, it, that they're anti-XRP just like Coinbase is. I want to think differently. And this is my plea to the Winklevoss brothers. Please, please add XRP. I want to be able to talk great about your exchange. I really do. And I told them on Twitter today. They had, Jim and I had this on Twitter. Our ad campaign hit the New York City streets and sparked a thoughtful dialogue about the future of money. We believe the crypto revolution has the potential to solve meaningful real world problems that no other technology can, but only a thoughtful rule-based approach will get us there. I love what the, the Winklevoss brothers are doing. I love these advertisements. I love that these guys are helping to lead the way in getting cryptocurrency adoption. I don't love that they don't have XRP. You can, I don't, I, I, that is not a, a long-term strategy for cryptocurrency and the adoption of cryptocurrency to, to house, uh, to, to run a cryptocurrency exchange and to completely ignore the number two current digital asset in terms of market cap that has more 
positive things going on for it than just about any, pretty much any cryptocurrency in the world. To ignore that digital asset, it, it, it's kind of, it, it's ridiculous. It makes you look kind of ridiculous. And I don't, I think that Gemini could be a huge player in this game. They are a huge player, but I want to be able to talk great about Gemini. Well, I told them in this tweet, I'm a big fan of what you guys are doing. Add XRP and I'll be the biggest fan you have. And I'm telling the Winkle Walsh brothers right now, you want to have a juggernaut behind you. The XRP community, if you really want your business to take off, let's take it off. Add XRP. Let's do it today. Come on. Add XRP. I want to start talking about you. I want to start. I want to send my XRP to the Gemini exchange. I want when, when and if I ever sell XRP, I want to be able to sell it through Gemini. I like what Gemini is doing. I want to be a huge fan. Please list XRP. We're ready. You need to do it. It will, it will help your business. I'm no Harvard graduate like you guys are, but I'm smart enough to know what XRP and the XRP community will do for your, your exchange. You, you don't have to go down that Coinbase road. It's time to man up and add XRP. Okay. Um, the next, um, I wanted to throw some credit um, to X Asset. Add X Asset 2. This guy is putting out some awesome XRP graphics. I'm going to use this one for this video today because I thought it was so cool looking. Uh, but if you don't already follow this guy, go follow him. I mean, he's putting out some real, I think it's a heat. He's putting out some really awesome, awesome graphics. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family to tell Gemini, the Gemini Exchange and the Winklevoss brothers to hook us up. We want XRP on there. Thank you for listening.